A lot of people say that sympathy cards are super hard for them to make, and I completely agree. But thanks to Waffle Flower's new With Sympathy set, they are so much easier to make. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I'm gonna create several different types of sympathy cards. I'll create some with a floral look, and then I'll create some with a geometric look. And this way, you'll have some ideas for different people in your life that you need to send a sympathy card to. First, let me show you this new Sympathy Stamps and Dies from Waffle Flower that gives you a ton of options in sub-sentiments. These are the stamps and dies from Waffle Flowers with Sympathy stamp set. You can see that there are two different script versions, a large and a smaller one. There's a block version of With Sympathy and then an outline version. All three of those With Sympathies have dies. Next, let's combine the Sympathy set with their new Sketched Violet set in two different ways. Sorry, I called it a sketched violet. It's actually a sketched iris coloring stencil, stamps, and dies. So I'm gonna start with the stamp and I am going to treat some cardstock with some anti-static powder tool. I am going to heat emboss this image and then we're gonna use the stencil to color it in. So I'm using Versamark ink on the major image of the stamp set and then I'm gonna pour gold embossing powder on top Tap off the excess so that you can see the image is coated in gold embossing powder. And then I'm gonna hold it with my Simon Says Stamp little hands there and melt that embossing powder with my heat tool until all of the powder is melted and the gold is nice and shiny. Now the stencil is a single stencil, but it has four different layers included on that stencil. So there's numbers and I of course started with leaves instead of starting with number one. I don't know why I can't follow the rules, but I always just start where my brain is thinking first. So I am going to color in the leaves first with a waffle flower shader brush and some distress oxide ink in mode lawn. And you can see that I'm holding the ink in place with my waffle flower ink holders. And I have all my brushes up above to the left in those little holder cups. So all I am doing is moving the stencil around to do the different areas and the different layers. And I'm holding them in place with some pixie tape. So there were two layers for the leaves, a lighter layer and then a darker layer that you could use for accents and shading and the flower is the same. So this iris, it actually tells you on the stencil, use this part of the stencil with a lighter color. So I'm starting with shaded lilac and then I'm going to go in with a darker color purple for those accent parts. There's actually two different parts of the stencil that accent the flower. There's this part that is kind of those darker areas of the petals and then there's that part that I am actually going to color in with yellow that accents the other part of the flower that is still left open there. And what's nice about the embossing powder is once it is heat set like that, it will resist the ink. If you get some on top of that embossing powder, you can just buff it away once the ink is dry because when it's wet, it will still smear. And I love how easy this was to color in with that stencil. It was super easy. Now I'm just going to use that same pixie tape that I used on the stencil to hold the dye in place. And now we're back with the With Sympathy stamp set. So I am going to use the smaller one with the script and they all have dies. The four major with sympathy sentiments have dies to cut them out. So I'm going to heat emboss it with gold since we did the flower with gold. Again, I have my little helping hands to hold that in place and let me heat set it. And then I'm gonna use that pixie tape to hold the die in place so that I can cut it out. Now I wanna use one of the sub sentiments. Like I mentioned, there are a ton for all kinds of cards for ones that are individual, for ones that are from a group, um, for ones that are talking about just deep consolences, just 
everything you could imagine that you would need on a sympathy card. There's everything available. So I'm going to stamp the sub-sentiment that says, so very sorry for your loss in some black ink. And I did that in a place where I knew I could pop up the flower next to it and the with sympathy above it. So I'm using lots of foam tape behind that iris. I don't want any of those leaves to get bent or ruined. So I'm going to pop them all up on some gold tape. The only, uh, some, foam tape. So the only thing that I'm not popping up is that very thin bottom there. And then I'm going to pop up the with sympathy as well. This was, oh, and don't do it upside down. That wouldn't be helpful, right? So this was a very easy, quick card to create. I really like the outcome, how it looks. I just added a few white gel pen details to both the leaves and the flowers. So if you feel like you didn't get the highlights you wanted, you can add those in with a white gel pen after you do all your stenciling. Of course, your other option with that sketched iris is to stamp and color in that image. So I am going to stamp the image with some Gina K Amalgam ink that is safe for Copic coloring. And I'm actually gonna stamp this time the extra images as well. I am using my Ohuhu markers because they have that brush end and the fine point end that I love so much. Plus they blend really easily. You can use two or three colors to get a nice blend. And you can see what I'm doing there. I am blending the bottoms of the leaves and underneath the leaves where the flower kind of sits on them. That's where it's going to be shaded. The top very top of the leaf is going to be bright and then kind of that middle of the leaf is going to be bright as well. I usually do light coming from above or in front. This way I don't have to remember that the light is coming from the right and so this part's going to be dark and that part's going to be light. I just kind of create it so that it always has the light in the center area and that just for me makes it easier. Once I get in a groove I kind of forget exactly about light sources and where they should be and where the shading should be. So same kind of thing. I'm going to do the darkest parts at the bottom of these petals and in the areas where the stamp has some lines to it because that usually tells me that it's like a fold or a pleat in the petal and so you want it a little bit darker. I'm going to color in the other piece of the flower with some yellow and then I'm going to color in the other leaves and just fussy cut those out. It was really quick and easy to do. I know that piece looks a little difficult, but it really wasn't. And I cut it right up to the black so that I could layer it on top of the die cut image and it would look like it was part of the original image. So I thought that was kind of cool to be able to do that and add that extra color in. This time I used the larger stamp that says with sympathy, with the script sympathy, and I decided to heat set it with silver embossing powder and die cut that out. Again, I decided to use the foam tape. I really like the way this image looks popped up. This time I'm going to stamp and heat emboss the sub sentiment. Probably should have thought of that before I put all that foam tape down and whatnot, but it's okay. I was able to control the embossing powder just in that one little corner and then heat set it as well. And again, when I am coloring something in, if I don't get the highlights that I really, really wanted, if I go a little too heavy handed or if I just don't get those areas that kind of pop because of that highlight, I'll just add them in with some white gel pen details. And I think the white gel pen adds a really nice finishing touch, whether you use inks or markers or even pencils, anything else. It just adds that little pop of interest. Now let's combine the With Sympathy set from Waffle Flower and their new line frames, foil plate, die, and stencil for a geometric look. The line frames foil plate is a whole panel image, so I am going to pixie tape some foil with the silver side facing the paper, the color side facing out, down on the back of that paper, I have two little pieces of pixie tape. So this whole bundle is going to sit on the foil plate. This is a way to make sure your foil doesn't slide around. Now, what I didn't do here was stand up and look over the top. So I missed how much of the foil plate I didn't get on the paper. 
but that's okay because we can cut this panel down to four by five and a quarter. But what didn't happen was it didn't slide around. I got a little bit of overfoiling, and all I'm gonna do there is use a sand eraser. It wasn't in an area that was super delicate that I was worried I was going to scratch off the design. It was kind of in those center areas. So it was very easy to just sand that right off. Okay, so again, I am going to adhere down a piece of silver foil with the shiny side facing out and the dull side facing the paper. And then I'm going to pull out my platform. If it's getting sticky for you, pull out the platform first before you lay down this little sandwich. And once that's down, again, I didn't look overhead, so I'm missing the little top there. That's okay. Again, we'll cut it down. And then put your plates on top and run it through your die cut machine. This came out really great. There was no overfoiling here. Of course, I missed that little bit at the top. That's okay. Again, we'll trim it down and we'll mat it on some cardstock, but look at how nice the foiling came out. This one I did in a dark blue foil. So I will link to the foil colors I used down below in the description box under the video. I'm gonna cut all of these down to four by five and a quarter so that I can mat them on some coordinating colors of cardstock. The die for this set actually cuts out an entire square. So I cut the center out of the silver and I'm gonna layer that on top of the blue. The stencil colors in all the little different bits. So you can choose to color in just some of it. You can choose to color in all of it with different colors. You can choose to color it in with two different colors, whatever your heart desires. This is such a fun stencil to really add some color to to this foil plate. What's nice, again, like I mentioned before, the ink will not cover up the foil. It can always be brushed off if it does cover the foiling a little bit, but the foil resists the ink. So you'll get beautiful coloring inside those foiled lines, and you'll still be able to see the shine of those foiled lines. So I'm using a whole bunch of different Distress Oxide colors. I have Prize Ribbon, Tumbled Glass, Uncharted Mariner, and and speckled egg. And I've used all the different shader brushes from Waffle Flower to color those in. When I don't have a huge area to color, I like to use those shader brushes. Besides a sand eraser, you could use a white gel pen if you just have very tiny areas that you need to fix. I am going to stamp the sentiment this time with chipped sapphire distress oxide ink. I love the way chipped sapphire looks for sentiments uh, because it's different than black or brown or gray. It's a dark dark, dark blue, but it, it pops just as much as a black would. And then I am going to adhere this panel down onto some Cosmic Sky cardstock, and that will be a nice finishing touch mat around the edge. For this card, I'm going to cut down the gold foiled panel down to four by five and a quarter once again, because at the end I will mat it on some cardstock and that'll allow me to cut off those little strips that I missed when I was foiling because I didn't stand up and look over top. Because when I do that, you get to see my head in the video and that is no fun and it doesn't help you at all. So this time I'm only going to use two colors. I'm gonna use Distress Oxide Weathered Wood. I'm still using the shader brushes from Waffle flower. And what I can do with those shader brushes is that I can color in the kind of crosses as a very opaque coloring, and then I can do some really light coloring for the little surrounding angles. Now, that's just another way to, if you only have a few colors, or if you only want to use a few colors, but you want a little bit of texture difference between those. So I really like the way the weathered wood looks, whether it's colored in all the way or just lightly brushed on. I'm gonna do the same thing for the squares. I'm gonna do a light brush for those. And then I am going to use mustard seed to color in the little lines that surround those gray areas. So for that, I am just going to color them in completely opaque and it's gonna be bright and it's gonna pop against the white and the gray. This is one of my favorite color combinations for sure. I like to use it in different ways and I thought with a sympathy card it would kind of fit really nicely. And that's how that can finish off with just two colors rather than the four colors that I used before. This time I'm using the outline stamp and I am going to stamp it with white pigment ink and then cover it up with some white 
heat embossing powder. And then I'm going to hold the hands and heat emboss that and then die cut it out with the matching dies. For the sub sentiment, I'm going to cut it into a sentiment strip. So that's another way you can use those little sub sentiments. You don't have to stamp it directly on the panel, especially if you have like me, a bunch of inking on there, you can stamp it on some cardstock and turn it into a little sub sentiment that says wishing you comfort. I don't know about you, but I think having sympathy cards in my stash will make things a lot easier for me when the need arises, rather than having to make one last minute. If you also find sympathy cards really hard to make, let me know in the comments below. YouTube thinks you might be interested in watching this video next. As always, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. They're new. <laughs> I was like, I got it, I got it, I got it. I don't have it. <laughs>